righteousness exceeds this because now I'm feeling this, I'm, I'm raising the standard. So the standard is still the same. Let's say, let's say, for example, again, let's say the majority of Christianity is right and these Jewish believers in Messiah, whoever these people are that are trying to, let's, let's call it Hebrew roots movement for lack of terms, but let's say those who believe in keeping the Torah, those who do not believe in keeping the Torah, but they both believe in Messiah. Let's say this side is, uh, you know, believes all the commandments, the, the standards, the morality um, that they believe. A new believer comes into your congregation, you're discipling him. What happens if he doesn't keep all the standard? He's missing some. Is he not saved? Is he still saved? I believe this, it's, a, it's the same exact thing on this side. There's grace over here. There's, there's, there's um, room for growth. There's room for maturity. Um, that's not to say we, we, we dump out the standard and the rules. No, what it means is let's, let's, deal with, let's deal with some things that might seem primary right now. But let's learn and let's mature in learning all these other commandments. Same thing on this side. You know, let's learn these things. Let's get our doctrine right. Let's get our behavior correct. Let's, let's walk more godly. Let's walk holier. Let's, you know, walk more in the sanctification. I think I may interrupt you. Um, um, but, but you're going beyond that. You're saying that there, there are some things that he doesn't even need to be taught later on. Um, you've already, for, as an example, you've already expressed doubt about circumcision which I don't even know would be considered one of the least of God's commandments in the Old Testament. But, so, but, but you've expressed doubt about your need to keep it. Wouldn't that be one of the... And what about the dietary laws? And, and of course, we could go on to uh, the matters of the priesthood. Uh, you know, in, at the beginning, as an example of that, at the beginning of chapter 8 of Matthew, when the leper comes to, to Jesus, he directs him, you know, uh, I'm looking at Matthew 8, 4. Uh, Go show yourself to the priest and present the offering that Moses commanded for testimony to them. So in that time, when the law of Moses was still in effect, uh, he was able to say things like that. Okay. But you're telling me the difference is you're saying, if I'm understanding you, that the law of Moses is still in effect, therefore we need to keep the, the Sabbath well. And I'm asking if it's still in effect, what about all of the other matters? Yeah. I've said it a couple... Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to answer okay. real quick first. I, I've been saying it, but I know it's difficult to hear it. Uh, not not in a rude way. I think it's okay. just difficult to grasp because it kind of doesn't make sense. It okay. almost sounds like I'm contradicting myself. But I'm, I'm speaking in light of the change. The change of the priesthood. Okay. I'm speaking in light of the fact that a, 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 a new, there's a new priest. There's a new priesthood. There's a change in the law. That has to do with the temple duties, the sacrificial system. Those things have changed. So when I see the righteousness exceeding, I'm, I'm seeing that as what the Messiah came and did and fulfilled. And now we follow in his footsteps. Okay, so are you saying because... In light of the context that there's a change okay. in the law, which is the sacrificial system and the priesthood. Okay, why not include the Sabbath in that? I mean, this is one of the two passage that, right. passages that you said. I mean, it seems like you're arbitrarily deciding that, no, I, I'm, I'm going to take the priesthood and related matters out of this, and I don't maybe circumcision, I'm not sure what else, but you're going to leave the Sabbath in there. Because Hebrews makes that very clear. Okay, well, so you're really down to Hebrews four. You're, you're really clear. down to Hebrews four nine. Then. Sure, it's okay. so there remains. So that, there essentially, remains what, a what he's saying is that that invalidated Matthew five as a proof text because we could, in the yes, same way, use exactly. it to say we need to present offerings and stuff. Do you understand that? Yeah, if you take away Hebrews, right? So, so you're really down to Hebrews as, as far as showing that we need to keep the Sabbath. Yeah. Matthew five is is doesn't work any more than to say that we need to present offerings. He, uh, Matthew 5 is just as much as the cup half full. It's incomplete. Um, it's, it's, if you're just sticking to that, you're only following the law of Moses. Only. That's it. Right. 
But if you're exceeding that, now you're taking into consideration all that Christ has fulfilled and done and commanded on top of what right. has been So already. really what you need is another text that shows that the Sabbath doesn't fall under what, God, what Jesus had or has already fulfilled. That it was not the shadow as opposed to the substance. So really, Matthew 5, as far as establishing a Sabbath, and this is just the point we're trying to concrete, mm -hmm. make concrete, it does not establish a Sabbath any more than it would any other part of the law. I think, like I said, with Hebrews, I, I know you guys want, you know, a verbatim command, but... Well, I think you were trying to offer we have, one. we have a verbatim command of what not to do anymore under this new covenant. Mm -hmm. And Hebrews makes it very clear, it's, the, it's about the priesthood. That's what changes. Um, but all the other, all the other laws, it's still in effect. There's no command not to do them. I want to ask out of curiosity, what about the dietary laws? Um, I think I think they're still in effect. I don't eat pork. I don't eat okay. I don't eat seafood. One, it's bad for you, uh, scientifically. Mm -hmm. uh, even an atheist uh, health scientist can you know. And it's been coming about. There's a there's a vegan seafood? movement happening. Yeah, oh. yeah. Seafood. They they clean they clean the sea floor. That's their job, is to clean. Not in the sense They're of like, fish, in the sense of no, not 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 yeah, not fish. Anything no. outside of he fish. knows he knows he knows the word. Okay, he knows Leviticus. That, but um, I know now. I know now. No, yeah. in that sense, so crabs and and certain and there's certain animals that God created yes. as the vacuums of the earth Catfish. and cleaners. Catfish. Yeah. I know. I miss my snow crabs. I used to have them every Friday. I used to go to Pathmark, give me some snow crabs. But, uh, you know, I just I do it because I love God. And, and, you know, I want to obey His commandments. You know, I don't do it because I'm, uh, okay. you know, out of, solely out of obligation. Like, oh, I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm in bondage. I don't feel in bondage. I feel very liberated about it. Well, so so, what do you do? What do you do? I'm, I'm again. I'm curious, <laughs> to say the least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess I should say I'm, I'm more than I'm more than curious, uh, but uh, certainly that. And what do you do with with Mark seven, uh, verse oh, yeah. nineteen? Thus he declared all foods clean. So you would never find any Bible older than fifty years old that would say that. What's the copyright of that one? Um. What is the copyright? Yep. Uh, you're asking about the copyright date? Yes. Mark 7. Well, they've got several in here, but the earliest one they have is 1960. Yeah. yeah I got 2007 that says that. Okay. Um, so you see? Yes. ESV. Thus he declared all foods clean. Yeah. Doesn't the, doesn't the King Not James, James? Yeah. King James doesn't say it. 7 uh, verse what? At the end of uh, Mark 7, verse 19. Yeah, it says, Because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth into the draught, purging <coughs> all meats. It does not say that, Thus he declared all foods clean, or all meats clean. That is a total huh. addition of that That's text. Interesting. I've never heard oh, you saying the older version. Right? Yeah. Okay. I'm I've, sorry. I've never I'm misunderstood that. Usually when there's a manuscript... Uh, Variation there. I have so in the context, there. and then it says, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, let's see. Um, where is it? Where is it? I'm curious enough about that. I'm going to go get the, the Greek New Testament. Can I do that? And he said, That which cometh out of the man that the father I'm looking for a specific verse too that breaks down what this whole argument is about in here from within out of the heart and pursue the things from these covers of the yeah it's earlier it's earlier yeah, it's gonna be I feel like it was after too yeah it might be before it's in the beginning of seven, so seven, one, and two, and three. Especially verse three, tradition of elders. Um, no, I feel like it was the words of, of uh, Yahushua that he said it's not about washing the hands. Oh, we probably need to have a... Let's see something. 
But um, when you read it in this light, just consider this: Jews that the Jews in this in this context, they know what clean food is and what unclean food is. A Gentile does it. If a Gentile was in this conversation, it wouldn't sound the same as a Jew. So in the in the in the mind of a Jew, they already have a separation of what foods are clean and what foods are unclean. So when the Messiah is speaking about food, it's speaking about clean food. Or meat, it's about clean meat. It's not about bad meats. So, um, and basically what it's saying is that all clean meats, the, the issue is with Talmud. It's this, it's this oral tradition, this book, this other Bible that wasn't written yet during this time. It was just an oral tradition that was built up during that gap from Malachi to Matthew, those few hundred years, there's this rabbinic um, tradition that built up now that what these rabbis teach, which is called the Talmud, it's a fence, it's a protection to protect the Torah, to protect the law and the prophets. That was the intention, but really what they did was just add and take away from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. But anyway, one of the rules was in the Talmud is, if you don't wash your hands before eating, you know, you're unclean. And Messiah is making a point that you don't need to. Um, you know that's not what the that's not what the Torah teaches. You know f what the food goes into your body and your food digests it and it breaks it down and it goes out and you um, you go to the bathroom basically. But what it's not saying is that now you can eat whatever you want because your body will break it down and make it clean. You know you can't eat everything in this earth and it won't. Like I said, these things, pork, swine, and, and, and these uh, certain seafoods that scientifically they're seeing that are not good for you. Mm -hmm. They actually spread bad chemicals in your body um, that even though you might be looking good, you know, for a while, but it's actually doing damage to you, you know, internally. Go ahead. And, and, but in the beginning of that, um, to try to just clarify with the oral tradition, when we look at verses 3 and 4 in chapter 7, Mm -hmm. It says, for the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they carefully wash their hands, thus observing the traditions of the elders. Mm -hmm. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they cleanse themselves. And there are many other things which they have received in order to observe, such as washing of cups and pitchers and copper pots. Um, so this, oh, and then five says, the Pharisees and the scribes ask them, why do your disciples not w walk according to the tradition of the elders? But eat their bread with impure hands. So, and that's, um, and, and and that's that's in essence of what we're saying. It's, they're speaking and they're really honing down on a tradition of men, rather than what was already laid out actually by Abba. Um, so they're really just saying, you know, in the same way when they when they went through the field and they were picking grain, mm -hmm. um, you're not going to see that. If you're gonna, if you're hungry, he said, you know, do you not know the scriptures when David went and and the priest gave him the showbread. They're saying you're. They're adding to it in the same way. They're adding to the actual Torah and putting on the traditions of the elders, and that's what he's combating, mm -hmm. really. So, it's, I mean, if you ate with unclean hands, obviously we wouldn't do that today. We wash our hands, but in the sense of this, he's saying that's that's not what the Torah says. You're mm -hmm. adding to. That's a tradition of an elder that you're talking about. Right. You know. Right. So I think that's. Not that it's bad to wash. I mean, we wash dishes in, no, in our hands before bad. we eat. Not that it's okay. a bad idea, but, but once you start, yeah, yeah, once you start looking down upon somebody yeah. and considering it sin. Well, I didn't mean to get off, you know, too deeply into this at, at this point. I was just, uh, again, uh, wanting wanting to hear your response to that particular point. And, and this is the first time I've heard that that uh, parenthetical statement at the end of. Um, Mark, oh, Mark seven nineteen is, is not in some. Yeah, I just versions. I just learned that one this week actually. Okay. I haven't tested it for myself. The guy that said he's like I've been to libraries, it's I've gotten crazy. many different versions of the Bible, and I've looked at all of them, and it's definitely true. So, Acts ten, when Peter was told, "Rise and eat," and God said, "What God has cleansed, consider not thou unclean." Yeah. You don't think that? I I know that's an illustration for the Gentiles. bringing in of the Gentiles, yeah, yeah, but. Yeah. It would it wouldn't have any relevance to uh, the cleansing of foods too for for eating. No, because the context was that he was he he was allowing these heathens, these Gentiles, to come in again by faith. They didn't have to be circumcised. They didn't have to be, you know, keep the the Torah. Uh, um, they can simply come in by believing in the Messiah, the okay. Anointed One. 
Okay. Well, let me let me make. It was unlawful for him to even be in a house, according to the 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 law. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that was another Talmud. Was that another Talmud issue? He couldn't even be in that house with the Gentiles or uncircumcised. So he's in there and he's preaching to them and they receive. You know. Okay. But also, okay. But may. Um, but with that, uh, he does. He does even say that. Can you restart? That? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah.